Yeah, so welcome to the One Read podcast, Odafe Atogun. Thank you very much, Molara. My pleasure indeed. Great. So since um, Taduno's song has been published quite a number of years now, what's been your yes. experience and what kind of interactions have you had with readers uh, since its publication? Yeah, it's been mixed. Uh, it's been a mixed um, feedback, mixed reactions. And, but generally, it's been very encouraging and very positive, I would say. And um, I'll, I would say a lot of readers are actually very kind uh, in the sense that it takes time to give you a feedback, to um, tell you what they enjoy about your storytelling, to tell you about the flaws. And all of these feedbacks, for me, only help you to become a better writer. So I, I'm one for, um, I'm very open, very, um, I'm, not, I'm not averse to getting negative feedbacks at all. For me, it's, it, it, it's a good thing in itself, you know? So, um, but all in all, I would say um, the readers have, have been very kind uh, in a very short word. In very short words, yeah. Readers have been very, very kind to me in, 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 their, in their reviews. That's good, that's good. Yeah. So let's go back to how it all started. At what point okay. did you realize that you wanted to be a writer? How did you become a writer? Hmm. Molara, if we are to go into that, um, we, we're going to be here for the next one week. Okay, give us the <laughs> short version. Seriously, seriously. The very so short version. Now, I'll take you back to my childhood. Um, this has to go back to my childhood. When I was living away from my, from my parents, right? Yes. My father was a headmaster. And then at some point, while I was still a, a, a child, I think I was about six or seven then, he took me to to live with a friend, a family friend. And um, I think my father went to school, back to school then, you know, uh, to get his degree and all that. And um, it was a very, um, I would say, troubled childhood for me back then. Um, and very difficult indeed. So my father, I was away from my father, from my mother, no, uh, um, no, form, no form of protection for me as a child, a six or seven old year child, you can imagine. And I always wanted to reach out to my parents, to my father, to my mother, you know, and the only way I could do that was to write letters to, to my father specifically. Yeah, because my mother was in the village, so I had to write, I write letters to my father. Even though these letters never get delivered, it gave me um, a sort of like um, release, just writing to my father, expressing my uh, myself, my condition, my desire to be with my family, to be loved, to be, you know, uh, pampered like a child, you know? So I write these letters and I give them to my custodian, but I sensed that they never, they never got delivered. But that did not dissuade me from writing more letters anyway. So that, would, I, would, that I would say was the beginning um, when I started to hone my writing skills. Now, fast forward to um, secondary school. Um, I told my father I wanted to become a writer. I, and he said, no, you have to become an accountant. Writers are very poor. You know, my father, is a, my father was a mathematician. He's late now. Um, he's a mathematician. He was a mathematician. And he wanted me to become an accountant. And I did not have that flair for that specific vocation. But because, you know, African context now, you must li listen to your parents. So I said, okay, I'll go and study accounting. But I kept writing, you know? So, um, and then I found it very difficult to communicate with my father. Because after the years I've spent with the family friend, before coming back to my parents again now, there was a gap in communication, as, as you could imagine yeah you know and um so what i do then is to write letters to my dad we live in the same under the same roof but when i when i want to express myself maybe i want to pay i want a pair of shoes i want money for school fees i want something i want to buy this i want, I want to do that i'll write i'll put them in a write in, in, in a letter to my to my father you know so without him knowing it 
even though he was averse to me becoming a writer, he was, you know, preparing me for a career in writing without realizing it. That so, so um, great. yeah, so um, those letters uh, became the foundation upon which um, I developed my writing skills ultimately, you know, and, um, and then, you know, one thing led to, led to the other and um, here um, we are today. Yeah, we're here today, yeah. And it's interesting you give that background about the letters that sometimes you were not sure were even delivered because yes. letters feature in Taduno's song and yes. letters which sometimes the characters aren't sure that they are delivered. Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. thing we're sure of, even we as readers, is that we don't know mm -hmm. how these letters get to the recipient. We don't know. Let yes. us get to people <laughs> even in places without addresses. Which introduces That's very interesting, Molara. <laughs> you saying that is very interesting. And I would cut in, please, if you don't uh -huh. mind. OK. Um, you see, now, let's go back. We are old school. Yourself, myself, and you know, we are old school. And if you remember, back then, we did not have internet. We did not have WhatsApp. We did not have um, emails or whatever. And we communicate with people from Lagos to Kano to Maiduguri, all over the country, even out of the, outside the country. We write letters. We call, how, now I think back, I say, how did we used to communicate back then? It's like a mystery to me now. Yeah. Now, you want to go and visit, visit a friend in the house. You don't know if that friend is at home. He's going to be at home. You still, you still track, you track him or her somehow. Letters, we used to write loads and loads of letters then because we did, we did not have any means of emails or WhatsApp or whatever. Indeed. And these letters get delivered somehow. Yeah. So I remember um, when I was in secondary school, I write letters to my mom. My mom used to live in Ondo State at that time. And I write letter, letter, letters to my mom. And somehow I would go to the park, give it to somebody. Somebody gives it to somebody. Some, somehow it gets to my mom. Yeah. You know? So for me, the mystery of the letters in Taduno's song um, can best be explained by the fact that back, back in the day, we used to deliver letters without knowing how this, these letters were delivered. Indeed, indeed, yes. very true. Because the first letter in the novel arrives, yes. uh, reaches Taduno's hand in a yes. city without a name. It's an yes. envelope without an address. And that's right. why I talk about, we don't even know how the letters get there. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. And the way it's presented in the novel, there's definitely elements of unreality, even in okay. the fantastical, even, even in the, mm -hmm. the idea of these letters. Did you mm -hmm. wonder if readers would connect with that or if readers would find that believable? Well, again, I, th I think humans, we are blessed with a um, very wild imagination. So I would like to leave that to the reader's imagination, but I will use my own experience as an example. One day I stood up from um, Lagos. I said I was going to Kano to go and see my, my uncle. I don't have my uncle's address. I don't have my uncle's, okay, then there was no mobile for, uh, phones anyway. I don't have my uncle's address. And I left Lagos and I traveled all the way to Kano to search for my uncle. And I, 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 through, the help, uh, through the help of one or two people, I was able to track my uncle. So I would say that um, the mode of delivery of these letters are not so much a mystery as, as, uh, as um, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I, they, they, they are not a mystery to me, really. So because we are the ones that have what forgotten. I've lived, so we are the ones that have forgotten how yes. how such uh, mechanisms used to work. Used to work, you know. We used to stay in touch. You have, you have a friend in Lagos. You live in Kaduna or you live in Abuja or whatever. But still, we used to keep in touch then with the limited communication tools at our disposals. At our disposal. So for me, I think when you read a book, um, the, the writer has put in a lot of imagination. It's a two-way thing. The reader, too, also needs to put in some bit of imagination to, for, for the understanding to be complete. And that's why in the interview I had with one read, I said, 
um, the writer and the reader are united, are perpetually united in a relationship that can be best described as a labor of love. So is it because no matter how well you write, no matter how beautiful a story you've written, if at the end of the day, the reader does not connect to that story, it, it's a waste. Indeed. And the readers are not uh, mechanical, they're not mechanical, uh, they're, they're not robots. They have their own imagination as well. So you're reading a book and even though the, the readers, the writer's imagination has transported you to a different world, you are also leveraging on your own imagination to actualize or to, to, to see the possibility of that world being real. So without the reader's imagination, a story would actually be wasted. Okay, I'm touched by what we've just uh, jointly come uh, agreed on. The idea yeah. that we've forgotten how letters used to, the system of letters used to work, how letters yes. were delivered. And the idea of forget, yes. forgetting, forgetfulness is one of the themes of uh, this novel because yes. uh, uh -huh. Taduno comes back to, to, to his city, to Lagos, to his community, and everybody's forgotten him. He's been, they've forgotten yes. him. And um, yes. is, is there a metaphor here that, that you as uh, an author that you're working with in this novel, this yes. whole Def idea of him definitely. having been forgotten? Yes, definitely. Uh, there's a metaphor there. Now, I'll put it this way. Um, Taduno is a threat to the government. The government is after Taduno. And anyone associated with Taduno would be dealt with, dealt with, with by, by the government, no question. It's like you trying to harbor um, a wanted uh, person, someone wanted by the government. So now, because there is this pervasive atmosphere of fear in the country at that time, everyone tend to like shy away from Taduno. We don't want trouble. You know that kind of situation. I, I don't want trouble. I don't know you. I, you come and say, don't you know me? I, I'm Taduno. Your name, I don't know you. I don't want trouble with government. So it's not, it's a selective amnesia, I would say. We choose to forget because we are afraid. We choose to forget because we are not selfless enough to identify with the cause. We choose to forget because of our own selfish interest. What is it going to benefit us by associating with Taduno? So it is happening in our country today, where um, stakeholders in the country, in government, even public stakeholders, would think of what benefit they would derive before they identify with the certain cause. So when they sh when people shy away from Taduno, it's not so much out of the fact that they are forgotten Taduno, but because they are afraid of the consequences of doing so. Now, thanks for that answer. What do you think is the connection between writing? I mean, definitely with the music in this uh, in the in the narrative, um, Taduno definitely yeah. feels that music that music can achieve something. Just like Fela, Fela said music is a weapon. Do you think yeah. writing and activism are connected? Or maybe the question is, do you think that art must serve a purpose in society? Well, that question, I believe, um, has been hacked um, quite, a, not, quite a few times, you know, to my knowledge. And I think, um, like everything we do in life, I believe there must be um, a purpose to whatever we do as humans. Um, if you're playing football, for example, you're playing to entertain, you're playing to make money. Um, you're making money, but you're entertaining the audience. Now, art, for me, it's a beautiful thing to behold. It's something that, you know, elevates your mind. It's something that uplifts you as a human, right? But in uplifting you, it also opens your eyes to things that you've not imagined before, to possibilities, infinite poss possibilities. 
it, it opens your mind, your eyes to the things that can be achieved beyond this place. So the arts for me, it's a tool that elevates the human mind. It's a tool that educates the human mind. And it, it's a tool, it's like a catalyst also that pours people to action. It's like it's like a, almost like a call to action. So the arts, arts must definitely serve a purpose for it to be ultimately meaningful beyond the beauty. Because you look at beauty is ephemeral. Don't, let's not forget. Beauty could be ephemeral. So beyond that beauty that we see now, what is there? And that's a question we must ask ourselves when we, you know, admire a piece of art or we read a piece of art. Well, where did you get the inspiration for some of these characters? Wow, interesting question, Molara. <laughs> now, <laughs> I have a way, you see, for me, eh, I like simplifying my writing, my writing, when I'm writing, I like to make it very simple for me, for, uh, for myself, you know? So when I write, the starting point for me is to name my characters, connect them to people I know. Hmm. People that have maybe, they might have the slightest traits of my fictional characters. So I connect these names. So when I'm writing now, I'm writing about Madara now, I would, I can imagine what you can do, what you cannot do, how you're going to do this. So it makes it easier for me. So now when I was writing Taduno's song, obviously the president um, was modeled on, um, what's it called? Abacha. Nigerian Nigeria dictators, let me put it that way. Abacha, Abacha Babangida, Babangida, it seemed like because Bwari, we have everybody. June 12 mentioned in there. Yeah, exactly. It seemed like Babangida could be in the yes. frame as well, yes. Exactly. So, uh, so Paduro himself, a composite, a composite of a composite Nigerian yes. yeah, military Leaders. dictators. dictators. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, you're right. So obviously, Taduno was modeled on Felakuti. And the power of Fela's music is known to everyone. So um, Taduno's, the power of Taduno's music was um, modeled on Fela's power, um, Fela's music. Now, to make, like I said, to simplify the writing for, my, for me, to make it easier for me to, you know, to write, to imagine and whatever, I name characters after people I know. TK, like I said, Tony Khan came to mind. Tony Khan, the um, writer. Yeah, uh, uh, Roland Aroli came to mind. Um, um, uh, what's it called again? There's this character, um, I'm trying to, Judah, Lion of Judah. There's this young boy I used to play football with back in the day, you know, and I call him, his name is Judah, so I call him Lion of Judah, and he will say, that's me. Understand? Uh -huh. So I was able to relate all of these things, these characters, jotting, um, you know, jotting my memories from people I've known, places I've been to, and all that stuff. And I remember that I once went to TBS in Lagos to cover an event, you know, as a journalist. Yeah. Long time ago. So all of those memories um, came to play when I was developing my, uh, my characters. And also, uh, another easy character in the book is Kungi. Which yeah, obviously is what Shoyinka. Shoyinka, yeah. yes. Shoyinka, you know, and we know Shoyinka and Fela Kuti are um, cousins, related. I believe. Mm -hmm. Related. So, and, um, you know, describing Kongi was so easy for me because you could relate with this man. Indeed. You know, we know his, his, his pen is much more powerful, that, much more powerful than, than the gun. So it was easy, easy for me to describe him to, you know. So, and I've always imagined Abangida, how does he relate with people behind that smile? We all know this man is made of steel, but he has this infectious smile, yeah. this charming smile yeah. that can disarm anybody. So I try to imagine beyond that smile, behind that smile, what is this man like? And I used um, that um, to, to develop the character, uh, the president. Also, people like... Bacha, Wari. Indeed, 
dictators all over the world because they all have one goal, and that is to oppress. And to so, silence. To silence, to silence, you know. So um, it's, it, it's, it's um, we, we live in a, in a world that there's so much happening these days. There's so much you can, you can relate, um, um, you know, you can, so, so much you can relate to because for instance, you as a writer, you've, you, you're well-traveled, you're well-versed in the cultures of the world, you know? So when you're writing a story, it's easier for you, it's easy for you to make, to bring that story to life because you've witnessed these things. So we witnessed the brutality of, we witnessed the brutality of dictators in this country mm -hmm. and we still are witnessing such brutality. Mm. So I would say Nigeria is a very rife ground for uh, materials for the writer, for the, for the, for the artist generally. Wow. Now you've mentioned TBS, the Power Balewa Square. Yes. You mentioned, and that was going to be one of my questions because a lot, okay. of, the, a lot of the action takes place at TBS. Uh -huh. um, a, 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 real, a real place, a real life place that looms even larger in your, in your narrative. Can you uh -huh. talk a bit more about the reimagining of TBS in Taduno's song? Yes. For me, um, TBS is like, um, I have very fond memories of TBS, um, a place of culture where you find um, people from all walks of life, you know, um, you know, mingling um, at events, you know. You and almost turn it into a kind of democratized space. Yes. And also at that time, I used to see um, a lot of people, homeless people, um, maybe not even homeless, people that are just out there enjoying themselves. And they, they, they sort of like, they owned that space. They, they, loved, they, they, they loved that space. So they identify with that space. So sometimes maybe you, you see people, you might see some, somebody at TBS, sleeping at TBS overnight. It's not that that person is homeless, but this person has an attachment to this place that somebody else cannot you know, understand. So it, it's just like back then, Lagos was such, for me, Lagos was a beautiful place back then. I loved Lagos. I felt Lagos is the best you know, place in the world to live, not now. Um, so the same thing with TBS. TBS for me uh, is where you go in Lagos and you find all sorts of people from all walk of all walks of life, you know, the rich, the poor, the beggars, and everybody at TBS, you know, they have this, they exude life. Hmm. They exude life. So TBS is like, it's not just an iconic, um, um, iconic um, space. It is a space of life. Because there, whether you are poor, whether you are rich, you are a beggar, you can, you are sustained in TBS. Again, you've beaten me to the question of the homeless people. <laughs> uh, we're going to try and flesh that out a bit more. There okay. are a lot, it's, it's unmissable, there are a lot of homeless people in the novel mm. and who are portrayed with humanity, with a lot of, um, a lot of gravitas, and Taduno finds a sense of community uh -huh. among these um, homeless people. Uh, what are we to make of you uh -huh. know, this, this kind of um, brotherhood or sense of community that they have between them, uh, Taduno and the homeless, the okay. band of homeless people? Okay, let me, I'll give you an example of myself. Uh, I like using myself as, as, as an example. One day, uh, I used to live in Dokwemu back then uh, with my friends. Um, so one day, my friend Ayo and I went from Dokwemu to Ikeja. 
those were our hustling days. So we went to sell something that would give us money to survive, because then we were in school. So we got to Ikeja. Unfortunately, the person that was supposed to pay for this item was not around. And we didn't have transport money on us to go back to the corner. So the option we have was to trek. It's, 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 a, long, it's a, long, a long way. So I said, someone rich man, finely dressed, exuding so much wealth. And I said, let's go and ask this man for help, for money to, get, to go back home. I said, no, Ayo. In the street, you don't go to rich people. You go to street people like yourself for help. They are more compassionate. He did not believe me. He went to meet this man, and the man turned him down. I said, I told you. I went to somebody on the street, a street man like us, and I said, look, we are stuck. We need money to go back home. And this guy gave us money without asking questions. So there is, the, the, there is this uh, brotherhood in the street that as long as you're there, you will survive. You, you know your own. Your own knows you. So that, 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 that's why in TB, that's why the, 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 the homeless pe um, people in TBS, they banded together so, so much. And don't forget, I went, I do not went to live with them. He went with food, uh, food with I items, clothes, and all that for his, for his friends. Mm -hmm. You know, he became friends with the homeless. Yeah. It's the same way Fela did. Fela was a friend to the homeless people, to, 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 the, to the poor and, and the homeless. Mm -hmm. You know? So, you know, you go to a rich man, or a rich person, and they will first look at you, size you up. Oh, this guy smells, man. You know, they don't, they, they won't identify with you. But go to the homeless people, people on the street, people in the street. They understand what life is all about. Some of these people are not just um, loafers; they are just unfortunate yeah. in this journey called life. V victims of circumstances. Exactly, and that was the that that, that is the case. Um, of uh, Thaddeus, the guy who dreamt of building a big Nigerian car. You know, yes. the government wanted go, government wanted to keep importing cars from Japan, from Germany, from the U.S. This guy said, "Look, I'm an engineer, an automobile engineer. I want to build a made Nigerian car." They yeah. took his dream, mashed it up. He, he lost everything and ended ended up in the street. You know, so. Yeah. When you see people in the street, the, the, the crux of that story is that when you see people in the street, don't take them by face value. Uh, yeah. And even if you take them by, by face value, yeah. take them as humans first before you see them as beggars or before yeah. you see them as homeless. See them as humans first. Because yeah. in this journey called life, anyone can be reduced to that condition anyone just like that. Anyone fall victim, yeah. So can, yes. you, can you talk about so, the portrayal? Okay, so yeah. yeah. You, please yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Can you talk can you talk okay. more so, about the portrayal of the city of Lagos? Um is it yeah, this, is it is it more from your experience or was there additional research? Because Lagos is very much present and different areas of Lagos, not just one. How were you okay. able to create um, this very palpable sense of the city? Okay. I used to find Lagos very fascinating. And I'm sure you know this, uh, Molara, that in Lagos, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, you will still catch fun in Lagos. You know, you will still catch that groove that will make you feel that, yes, I'm in a city, in a big city, you know? So you, you've lived in London before. I've, I've, done, I've lived in London myself. You've lived in several cities across the world. And you know that in most of these cities, if you're poor, you're poor. <laughs> if you're poor, you're poor. But in Nigeria, in Lagos, if you're poor, you will still catch fun. You will still live, you, 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 you will still have that feel that yes, I'm living in a city. Yeah. You know, that's why even if you're living in one room, one face me, I face you room, you still feel that, you know, yeah, this is Lagos. This is Lagos. I'm in Lagos. 
You understand? You don't feel you are in Ajibunle or you are in uh, this thing. Yeah. You are in Lagos. So for me, Lagos used to be a very fascinating city, very special city. I used to love Lagos. Like I said, not, not anymore because of the transport congestion and whatever. And, you know, all the, the, the fast life, you know. I mean, definitely, so, um, definitely in the novel, people get around very easily in Lagos. Very easily. <laughs> 15 I minutes Lagos, and they're know, there. Yes, I used to love this uh, catching Molue in Lagos. I used to like, I used to be like a, a master at hanging on Molue and, you know, and it was, it, 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 it was like a big thrill for us catching Molue in Lagos back in the day, you know. So a city like that was so special in my heart, you know, and I felt I had to give back to Lagos for all Lagos gave to me in those days. Because believe you me, when I lived in Lagos, things were difficult for me and my friends, but we survived. And not just survive, we had fun. We had good fun in Lagos. You, how had, how, how can you, not... you had experiences that uh, later fed into, into your writing. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, so uh, when, when I see, in, 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 especially when, when I was writing about that TBS, I imagined myself as one of the homeless people there. Mm -hmm. I imagine myself as a homeless person in Lagos, but not feeling homeless, feeling that I'm in a city, I'm in Lagos, Ekonomowa, Shumo. Yeah. So it's, it's like you can be in, um, in New York, in London, and boy, if you're in that condition where you are homeless, you would be very, very miserable, not in Lagos. We still go out and buy our, 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 our going and bread, and we have a good meal, you know? Yeah. For little or nothing. So Lagos was very, very, and I still, it's still very special, but I think I've just, uh, it's not you're, for me anymore. You're, you're, you're over it. Yes. <laughs> but, you've written, so, but you've written a homage to, to Lagos. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. so I have just about two or three more questions. What kind of music okay. were you list? What kind of music were you listening to when you were writing this novel? Hmm. What What would you guess, Lolara? Well, what would you so guess? that would be the the the, uh, the obvious guess. Yes, Fela, um, Chris Botti, um, David Ma Ma um, Miles Davis, specifically. Um, seven steps to heaven. Okay. I love that. Yeah, and um, sketches of Spain. I love that album, Sketches of Spain by Miles Davis. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. So and um, um, when I really want um, pace, uh, I listen to uh, Richard Elliot, and um, yeah. So for me, um, music like sets. The, the, the tune for me when I, when, when, I'm, when I sit down to write it says that tune for me and um, it, it's, it's like an, it, it pumps this energy in me this adrenaline in me that really that just steers my stimulates my creative juices in the stand so um, um, for me music is very 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 key and when I'm writing I imagine myself composing songs with my words with, with you know with every every sentence I, I I make, so that's why I have to make it. My writing is very simple. I write. I don't. I'm not used to using big grammars and because big grammars and music would not go hand in hand, you know. So the simplicity of my of my writing can can a can, can be said. accessibility accessible accessible accessibility. Right? That's mm -hmm. that's the word, you mm -hmm. know. You know, so yeah, so music for me is very, very important, you know. Great to and hear I'll, I'll tell you a story also, Mona, I'll tell you a story. Okay. Um, back then, I used to like Fela, listen to Fela so much, and my father was like, this guy and Fela, you know? Then one day, my, they, they, they said they've arrested Fela again. My father said, what has this man done again? I said he didn't do anything, daddy. He said, yeah, he never does anything. And they keep arresting, he does, never does anything. You know, you know that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know that cynical, uh, he never does anything. And they keep arresting him. So he's trying to say, fella is, has done something, you know? He's, so trying, to know. Say, he's trying to say there's no smoke without fire. Um, exactly. <laughs> so, so um, it's, it's, um, 
and you would realize that um, fellas music his songs are like storytelling yeah to me yeah they're like, mm -hmm. yeah it's like, they're like teacher like, don't you know? teach me nonsense she understand Shuffling and smiling green. you know make my brother suffer make another uh, these are real life stories you know yeah yeah so <laughs> So I, I think that village, like that. anywhere right. in Africa, you know, <laughs> yeah. think, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. pastor's house, nine day yeah. fine pass, <laughs> fine pass, you know. Yeah. So these are these are reality simplified for us in the form of music. So I try to, to do the same thing with my writing. Thank you. It comes across very very effectively. So thank you for that. The next question thank is, you very much. is yeah. The I mean, next question is yeah. related to that. And there's a scene in the in okay. the novel where um, Taduno is in a is solitary confinement. He is in he's in detention. Yeah. And there's a there's a, uh -huh. a prison warder that he connects with. Yes. And they both come to this uh -huh. realization that look, you're no free. You're no freer than I am. I'm in fact I'm freer than you. Uh -huh. You yourself, you're uh -huh. you're a, uh -huh. you're you're a captive of this uh, of this uh, system. This regime. System. And yeah, this regime. Yeah, yeah rereading that scene a couple of days uh -huh. ago, I thought of Asha's song, Jayla. Mr. Jayla, uh -huh. you know, both of them, where she talks about, you know, uh -huh, Mr. Uh -huh. Jayla, you and I, yeah. we are both prisoners. So, so that song encapsulated that scene perfectly for uh -huh. me. And I wanted to know, uh -huh. is there any particular song that captures a scene in the novel succinctly for you? any particular one song that captures a scene in Tadou's okay. song. Okay, and that, the, this, this, the, this song is, um, Anogoguri, make my brother homeless, make another talk. Anogoguri, make my brother hungry. So that's when um, Tadou went to live in TBS and he bought food for everybody. They eat together, they pray, they see the, the, they pray together before they start eating. They say their thanks and everything together as a family, you know? So that song for me um, is one that I always take to heart myself. Uh, wherever I, I, I can, I make sure that I allow this, um, this goodwill to trickle down, you know, to the unfortunate or the less privileged, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah. and. The that scene you described of the of Taduno with the water in the um, in the underground cell, as as that song, like you said, in the cell I think, I think under I, a cell, in the cell yeah, under a cell. I think I remember re listening to that song while writing that writing that uh, writing Taduno's song. I remember wow. the yes, wow. yeah. So yeah, so so it, it's like most of the scenes there. Uh, you see in Taduno's song, somehow we're inspired by one song or the other. Wow. So I remember that. I, I think, I think um, um, I, there was this Assad song, the, fam the popular one, I've forgotten now. Um, uh. um, I think um, anyway, there is song of there ours. There is that... fire on the mountain. Yes, mountain. Nobody says yes. to be on song. the run. There is fire exactly. on the mountain top. <laughs> yeah, on the mountain top. And no one is a so, running. So that song for me also, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I to stimulate this awareness in me that look, if you don't look out for your neighbor, you would end up in the same condition as your neighbor. If you don't look out for, because you feel, oh, it's not my business. It's gonna, at the end of the day, it's gonna be your business because it's gonna, the ripple effect, effect is gonna get to you and you would have no choice. So um, all of these songs, um, that's underground, that cell, under, on the underground cell, the cell under an under, underground cell, what well, it was also partly inspired by, by that Asas, uh, Asas song, um, listening to that song. So I imagine how would these dictators 
how do they keep their victims so so far away from human uh, communication how do they manage to like keep them that no one can even you know they, they, they won't even see the sun shining you know, they won't see the sun at all the rays of the sun sun at all so i imagine what it's like to be their victim to be in that place where you are totally cut off from all human communication you can't even see you don't know if it's daylight or if it's you know night time you know so um all of these um imaginations uh trying to like imagine what the the dictator's cell looks like um really you know helped me to put so much into that um, description thank you my final question yeah do you feel it's important to give the reader a happy ending or not huh. okay um and how would you define a happy ending well okay once some time ago um we i are had, not um, giving mm. anything away about the novel yes i know so i know but i'm asking this question. i know some time ago um the french ambassador to nigeria invited me to a, to a lunch in abuja uh, when he sent for me uh, i was wondering why is the ambassador sending for me the secretary wrote to me and he wants to see me and i was wondering <laughs> so i went there for lunch and he said he read my book and he loved it and he learned that I lived in Abuja, so he had to like get in touch with me. I was very, very touched. I was really, really touched. And during our conversation, he said something. He said, look, he said your work reminds me of Kafka. Hmm. He said, but Kafka. unlike Kafka, he said, unlike, unlike Kafka, you provide solutions. Your stories provide answers. Unlike, unlike, unlike Kafka, those are the words he used. And I said, okay, I said, oh, I said, okay, maybe I'm going to change. He said, no, 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 don't change. Keep writing, keep writing what you're writing. It, it's, it's beautiful, you know. So um, somehow I find this need to provide some answers through my writing. It might not always be very. Um, um, beautiful answers it might not be um you know what it, it, it might not be like um um how do i put it answers that would um, appease your human soul but it provide uh, provides answers all the same like why are people homeless why are people um you know searching for love what is the purpose of love? So I provide, I try to provide answers in that, in those regards, you know, but not necessarily, you know, a happy ending because at the end of the day, life is what it, it is, you know, it's so difficult for us to like, uh, as humans, no matter how rich or how comfortable or how um, powerful we, we are, there are certain things that we cannot make right. And these are the things that would always come back to haunt us, you know, at our, you know, private, you know, in our, in our private moments. So answers, if, if providing answers through your stories, through your art, does not necessarily mean that these answers will be beautiful answers. They might be ugly answers, but ugly answers that tells you what the reality is. So, um, so without, without revealing, revealing anything, um, you 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 read my my you read Aduno's song, you know okay, um, you know about you learn about the brutality of the dictator, you learn about the difficulties of life living in a city like Lagos, you learn about the. Um, the, the brotherhood that exists in the streets. It's not as if the streets is a beautiful place, but all the same, knowing that you live in the street, for those living in the street, they still have this sense of belonging. It's something. So it's, I don't, don't feel sorry for, oh, this man is in the street, he's suffering. 
That man in the street suffering might be much happier than you living in a mansion. Indeed. So the answers that we seek are not always the always beautiful answers. Mm -hmm. You know, or they, 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 they are not what we are we might be searching for you know so but when they come to us when answers come to us it's up to us to to to, to embrace these answers and um take them as part of our existence great on that note thank you so much for your time